And welcome back to the Week 10 edition of the John Carroll Football Preview Show. And joining us now is Blue Streak's graduate student defensive tackle, Nick Costanzo. Nick, thanks so much for joining us this week. Logan, thanks for having me on, man. It's a complete honor. Absolutely. So, you're from Buffalo, New York, and you played for Maryvale, ultimately in high school. So, what made you end up choosing JCU? So, throughout the recruitment process, I mean, it's a kind of an old adage, but looking at your next four for the next 40. And for me, you know, I, I knew I wanted to major in accounting in undergrad. And some of the other schools I was being recruited by didn't necessarily have the program I wanted, or it wasn't as notorious as, you know, the John Carroll Business School. And, you know, I remember coming on my first visit here with Coach Joe Dever, who's now at the Cleveland Browns, and meeting Coach Rick Finati, who was the head coach at the time, and seeing, you know, I remember walking in the halls of Shula, in the basement of Shula where the locker room is, you know, I walked by the weight room and there was an active lift going on and I just saw the brotherhood and I saw how close everybody was and I think it was one of their max out days. So the juice was flowing and, uh, you know, the academics fit, it checked that box and it checked everything athletically. I mean, John Carroll's a tradition rich program and it's everything that I wanted. So it really worked out well. The well-rounded, not just the athletics, academics, and everything. Just life in general really seemed to Mm -hmm. fit you well. Now, looking a little bit more on the football field, this season in particular, you are in the midst of a career season in terms of your success this season. You have 45 tackles, 7 tackles for loss, 3.5 sacks, 2 pass breakups, all of which are career highs, and you also have a fumble recovery this year. What has been working well for you this season? You know, I think it's just the chemistry with the guys on the line. I mean, we graduated some great players last year. I mean, don't get me wrong, but you you see like, you know, a guy like Ben Grafton, you know, my partner in crime plays in there in the in the middle with me. I mean that's right. Him and I have been close from the second he stepped on campus and I loved playing with Dan Garkar and another name, Kyle Allshafer. But then you throw in Bricker into the mix and the relationship I have with him and Grafton and guys like Lydiard and JP, I mean it's just we're in a good flow right now. And hopefully we want to finish that out strong in this potentially last game of the season. Hopefully it's not. <laughs> and Right. And you do talk about that chemistry with the defensive line. You guys mm-hmm. are being led by Coach Hall in his first mm-hmm. year, John Carroll. What has he meant to the program this year? I think Coach Hall has done a really good job. I mean, coming in in the spring, you know, he had to learn the playbook and essentially a veteran position group. You know, a lot of the guys have had three years to study the playbook plus. I mean, I, you know, four years myself. But I think the really interesting dynamic in there is that it's multiple people coaching up each other. So it's a constant flow of communication between the coach and the players helping out. Jason DiMatteo, he's been a huge help. We have Coach Manilo coming back. I mean, he's essentially the godfather of the John Carroll defense that we run. Him and Coach Long and Coach Schaefer back in the day helped make this defense. And, you know, having those football minds around you and just having that constant flow of communication and certain knowledge tips being shared and a lot of experience as well. And I think it's been an awesome thing. Well, it sounds very beneficial, you know, not just the coaches helping the players, but vice versa, especially mm-hmm. players here for a few years, new coaches starting to make the transition mm-hmm. to John Carroll. And, You guys are certainly making it seamless so far. You are right now one of three graduate students on the Blue Streaks defense this season. How has taking even more of a leadership role been for you this season? It's been awesome. The group of guys we have on this team, they're awesome to lead and to work with every day and play ball with. And, um, you know, that was definitely one of the reasons that I wanted to come back was because I knew guys were going to be looking to me to stand up and be a leader for the team. And it's worked out, I think, pretty well. And everybody leads. Whether it's, you know, you're a scout guy or you're a every down starter, everybody finds ways to lead. And once you put that all together, it's special. Ultimately forming one John Carroll Blue Streaks team. Correct. That is for sure. John Carroll defensive tackle Nick Costanzo is our guest on the Week 10 edition of the John Carroll Football Preview Show. Talking a little more specifically, you had a particular game this year, arguably your breakout game of your career. You were named to the D3Football.com Team of the Week for your performance against Capital on October 22nd. In that game, nine tackles, four tackles for loss, two and a half sacks, a QB hurry, and a pass breakup, all of which were either career highs or tied for career highs. What was going through your mind as that game progressed? You know, I mean, you kind of just get in the flow. There was a play where I was getting double teamed. It was the first sack of the game. And, you know, I was getting double teamed, and I kind of split through the double teaming and at the first sack. And after that, I was like, let's go get another one. And another thing is the guys I have around me, I completely attribute the success of that game to them. I mean, two of the plays I made nice plays on were a result of other guys doing their job. There was a blitz we ran where Mike was actually coming up, and he drew the eyes of two of their offensive linemen that freed me up. I mean, that's just the first example I come to. But I attribute it all to the other 10 guys I have on the field with me. I and mean, just everybody has to be doing their jobs. You know, you got the DBs locking down the receivers to make the quarterback be in the pocket. You got... Tremendous pass rushers in Grafton and Bricker and Lydiard 
making the quarterback step up. I mean, it was really cool to be a part of. A little extra note from that game I couldn't help but notice. So the JCU Sports Instagram account, they posted a video, very small type of video, probably just a few seconds, but it was a mic'd up of you on the sideline, and they mentioned something about you having the nickname called the Cheeseburger Bandit. <laughs> Would you mind maybe elaborating a little bit on what that is? Yeah, so um, Michael Palmer actually was the one that first started calling me that. I don't know if you've ever seen the show Trailer Park Boys. I have not. I've but heard of it before. There is a uh, specific character in there named Randy, and he goes by Randy Bo Bandy, and he's got this insane gut. The running joke in the show is that he's always the cheeseburger garage or the cheese, they call him the cheeseburger <laughs> bandit. And uh, myself having a hefty midsection coined that. And at the time when they were micing us up, they threw it on me and I was ga- I mean, we I don't remember how long the drive was, but I was coming off and I was like breathing heavy and they're like, right. say something funny. <sighs> I just pointed to my gut. I was like, cheeseburger bandit. And I was like, <laughs> they cut this part out, but I was like, Tenzer, get the mic off me. Like, you're just going to get a lot of heavy breathing. I was like, just give me a second here. I mean, yeah, that's great. Certainly humorous for sure. And yeah. uh, that really just sounds like you're just having fun with the guys on the field through and through. You guys are doing a job, but you're having fun while you're doing it. For sure. That's great to hear. Now, just kind of circling back to last week, it was a tough game. It's no easy task for anybody to take on the number mm-hmm. two team in the nation. Facing Mount Union last week, ultimately falling to the Purple Raiders, 34-28, to but you guys did not give up without a fight for sure, scoring 14 unanswered near the end of the game. You guys fought hard until the very end. But you do have one more regular season game. It's against Otterbein this mm-hmm. week. What will it take to defeat the Cardinals this week and end the regular season in the win column? You know, it's just doing what we've been doing all season. Execution and doing your 1 for 11th on every play. Understanding that you have a job on this team and um, helping set up and create plays for guys to make game-changing plays on. And we really we didn't change anything after last week. It's just right back to work. And I think that mindset's going to carry us through. We talked a lot about on the football field. Going to move off the football field a little bit here. You do have a degree in accounting from John Carroll. Do you have any plans in mind for once your time at John Carroll is officially complete? Yeah, so I uh, I was fortunate. I did an internship with a company called Deloitte. They're located globally, but I'm with the downtown Cleveland office, and they extended a job offer to me. So next fall, I'll start there. In the meantime, while finishing up my MBA in the spring, I'll study for the CPA exam, and then that's really it. Very good. Certainly congratulations on that job offer from them. And Thank you. Wishing you nothing but success there. And something else as well, being not on the football field, what do you enjoy doing when you're not on the football field? Oh, they can't seem happy. You can. Yes. Big fisherman. I've been chomping at the bit to enjoy some of the fall steelhead season while it's uh, still here. So I'm a big fisherman. Obviously, love working out, so I'll continue to do that. But I feel like those are my main two, two passions or hobbies outside of playing ball. Very cool. And more reflecting now on your John Carroll experience as a whole, this is, as a graduate mm-hmm. student, your fifth year here with the Blue Streaks. What has been your favorite memory, either on or off the field, being oh, part of the team? That is an unreal question. You know, it's really hard to pinpoint one specific instance, but I know the things that I will remember going forward. Not to pinpoint, I don't want to put anybody on blast here, um, <laughs> but really, like, the in-the-locker-room environment is surreal. Like, guys are just hanging out, being dudes, essentially, and, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun, and that's, I think, the part that I'll miss the most, for sure. I mean, playing is great, but hanging out with this team, and not even just this team, years past, too, I think that's really going to be the main takeaway, you know, especially, like, think of camp. We do a lot of team bonding in camp, experiences like that, and then just in the regular season, finish up practice and go hang out in the locker room for a little bit and just joke around with the guys. Definitely miss that, for sure. And that's something that a lot of players have talked about being on the preview show here. Really not just one particular moment, but being with the guys Mm -hmm. and spending time with your brothers is great to hear that that's had a lasting impact on you. So now we're going to go into our final segment of the interview. Do you want to thank you once again, Nick, for taking the time to sit down with us? I call it Fast Favorites, so just a couple quick topics just to get your favorite on it. All right. Are are we ready? Ready, Ready, baby. Let's go. All right, perfect. Firstly, might be a tough one. Being on the lineman side, favorite food. Cheeseburgers. Come on. And, you know, I think I think I just walked myself into that one, didn't I? Makes sense to me. All right. Your favorite show. Ooh. Oh, that's tough. I'm, I'm kind of in between right now. I want to say Game of Thrones, close second, Dexter. Your favorite movie. Oh, God. Another good one. The Patriot with Mel Gibson. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> favorite music artist. Oh, uh... Band, Led Zeppelin, artist, Jimi Hendrix. Oh, God. It's kind of like the 1970s rock style. Uh, Love the rock. Now, is that what you'd use for hype music or maybe a little different? More so heavy metal. Okay. Big Metallica. Yeah. Throw in the grunge there. Throw in some Alice in Chains. Okay. Um, Also, pregame wise, big uh, 90s hip hop guy. So a lot of Biggie, Puff Daddy, Nas. Those are kind of my main three. 
Wow. So it sounds like a little bit of everything. For yeah, sure a little bit of everything. I don't listen to a lot of modern day music. I'm kind of right. a, kind of an old man in that sense. Oh, <laughs> you're the, the classic music connoisseur. <clears throat> yeah. As the grad student for the Blue Streaks. Very good. And finally, your favorite all time football player. Hmm. It has to be Ray Lewis. Playing linebacker back in the day, he was he was the in little league through high school was the guy I'd throw on the highlights of before games to get amped up. And that's certainly somebody you know playing football, fire up the team, make some mm-hmm. big hits. That certainly is a player who would do just that when he was on the gridiron. Nick, that's just about all the time we have, and thank you once again for sitting down with us, and best of luck this week against Outerbine. Logan, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on, brother. Absolutely. That was Blue Streak's defensive tackle Nick Costanzo for our Week 10 interview, and coming up, a bit of a preview of today's matchup between your D3Football.com 22nd ranked John Carroll Blue Streaks and the Otterbein Cardinals right here on your home for the Blue Streaks, WJCU 88.7.